Welcome everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video today. We're going to be looking into Russia. Of course, a very, very interesting topic right now with a big conflict between Ukraine and Russia. Now, what we have seen is a huge sell-off, right? A huge sell-off when it comes to Russian equities. And the Russian economy right now is really in a lot, a lot of trouble. And, and frankly, it is somewhat unprecedented, right? Right now, it is basically the world teaming up against Russia economically, and we see huge, 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 huge impact on its economy. Uh, and it, it even surprised me, right, how much businesses, how much economy in general can do to a country. And as we can see right here, 85% of an ETF uh, has basically been evaporated. So this is not one business. This is the entire Russia. This is entire Russia, okay? A, a basket of Russian businesses. It just evaporated 85% of its value. Lost it, right? Huge. So right now what we see is in Russia that the businesses are not doing well, of course. Uh, there is chaos in the country. And what we see is that not only stocks are performing poorly, but also the currency is weakening very, very fast. And so all of these combinations made made it so that right now financial institutions and people that invest in Russia are kind of panicking. So today we're going to be looking at the question, is Russia attractive to buy or should you stay away from it? Now, my thesis is please stay away from Russian businesses at this point in time, because not only are we in this major, major economic conflict, economic conflict, but of course, also geopolitical conflict, uh, which of course is highly uncertain. And we'll see how that how that plays out. But I think something that is important to bear in mind, too, is that actually banks and financial institutions in the Western world, too, are somewhat panicking. For example, some Russian ETFs, some big ones, I think actually the one that I just showed you is one of them, but a couple of Russian ETFs, okay, so what does that mean? Businesses that create ETFs for Russia, so they just buy a bunch of Russian equities, they throw it in a basket and sell that, right, the ETF. They are actually going to sell all their businesses, they're going to dump all their equities, and they're going to completely liquidate the ETF. Now, of course, that is major, major news, right? Because there are literally people right now thinking, oh, perhaps, you know, uh, Russia went down a lot. Let's just buy. OK, and so what happens for these people is right now they could literally buy an ECF at low prices. The stock market could drop significantly, which it basically does every day for Russian equities at this point. Right. So next day, perhaps you lost 25 percent, perhaps even more. Right. Perhaps you lost 85 percent at this point. Who knows? And the, the, the firm that is managing your ETF says, enough is enough, we liquidate, you get back your money, you're done, right? So what the situation you find yourself in is, let's say you bought an ETF for $100, let's assume a loss of 85%, which is of course a lot, but nonetheless, the, the logic says the same. You literally get five fifteen dollars in your bank account, and that's all you get. So right now you find yourself in a situation in which you bought, uh, you know, between parentheses, a safe ETF, right? Not to save after all. And now you only have a little bit of that first initial investment left in cash. So this is highly, highly, highly problematic because of course you cannot buy back all the Russian equities that you owned before. Even if you want to centrate in, in a couple of Russian equities, it is extremely, extremely tough uh, because as we can see, we see that investors struggle to trade Russian assets, okay? And this has to do with sanctions. As we can see right here, of course, Russian banks have been removed from the SWIFT payment network. And so basically what happens is foreign investors are stuck now. They don't know how they can exit without failing full of the new sanctions, right? And able to find counterparties who are willing and able to buy. So right now we literally found ourselves in a situation which is somewhat unprecedented. The people that own Russian businesses cannot do anything with it. Putin prohibits it, the sanctions prohibit, prohibits it. So either you cannot sell your piece of the business, you cannot buy new pieces of the business, you cannot do anything. And of course, this is a highly, highly risky situation. Perhaps not even if you just think about it very th theoretically, you own a piece of the business, you cannot control it for one year, two year, three years, who cares, right? If you like the business long term, it's going to do well. But actually, we've seen some very radical reactions of brokers and banks. And that is something that really, really scares me. As we can see right here, eToro clients up in arms over forced echoes from Russian investments. What literally happened is eToro forced liquidate 
okay, with the first possibility of multiple Russian equities, right? So this is a huge equity firm, 10.6 billion of clients' assets under administration, okay? So this is a, a lot of money. What they do is they literally sell pieces of Russian businesses without consent of the shareholder, all right? So it's not that the shareholder gets an option, oh, do you want to sell? Do you? No, it is just you wake up and your broker sold all your Russian equities and you only got this cash with, of course, a huge, huge capital loss, right? And so this is, of course, a highly scary situation, right? Because you don't control your investments anymore. So right now you are in the situation that on the one hand, you don't know what's going to happen in Russia, right? Because you cannot control that investment, also not from the distance. You cannot sell, you cannot buy, you cannot do anything. You know, right now you cannot even receive dividends as such, of course, too. So it's, it's highly problematic. And at the same time, you don't even have anything to say about your piece of the business. You literally own a piece of the business, but your broker can say, we dump it. Now, of course, many of you will think this is, of course, not possible. How can they, without consent, dump your stock, right? They actually can. As we can see in the statement that they published, they have this in their conditions, okay? The terms of conditions and literally what they state, right, is we can do whatever we want. We can delist assets, we can list assets, we can sell, buy and stuff, but only under a couple of circumstances and one of them is war, right? And right now we find ourselves in this terrible situation in which we have this geopolitical con conflict, right, which is, of course, most horrendous for the Ukrainian people and for also for the Ru Russian civil civilization to some extent, of course, because they suffer from from economic sanctions too, right? So we have a lot of suffering in the world, and at the same time, this 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 basically rule that we always just cross off and we think, oh, you know, they can do things during the war, you know. I mean, we are not used to this situation, and banks are not either, brokers are not either, and so. This, in my opinion, is somewhat of a rash decision to just say we dump for, for all users, force dump, okay, all Russian equities at an all-time low, right, which it which is going to result in huge capital losses. But at the same time, it also shows that right now we live in these unprecedented times and we there is so much uncertainty, right, not about even the underlying asset, the business itself, which is, of course, already huge, but... The whole thing, if you can control your investments, is at stake here. And so that is something that I say, you know, this makes things unbuyable. This makes equities unbuyable at this point. And so my big advice is stay away from it, okay? Because, of course, only eToro did this so far, but there is no guarantee that this is the last thing. Now, of course... I just wanted to mention is the geopolitical situation in itself is, of course, way more severe than what we see on the screen, right? The eToro 4 sale, don't get me wrong. Uh, my thoughts are with all the people that live in that area. Uh, but nonetheless, we live in unprecedented times. Uh, and my job is to inform you from an investment perspective. And I would say, don't take the risk, right? Because if, if you know, if you if there are doubts about the underlying asset, that is one thing because you can agree or disagree if a business is going to be bigger and, you know, earning more money in five to 10 years. But right now, you don't even know if you control your own asset, right? You don't even know what your bank is capable of doing. And so please, you know, don't take this risk because it is just absolutely massive, right? It is a massive risk. So don't even touch them right now. That is at least my advice. Let me know in the comments what you think about all this. Do you think it is wise to invest in it right now? Because I actually have read the comments and that's why I wanted to make this video. I have read the comments and I saw that some of you were actually buying Russian equities. And so my thoughts go out to you too, because you know this is a scary thing that your bank can say, okay, you're trading at all time lows, big losses. We are still going to dump everything for you and you're not going to get back anything basically. And so this is, of course, a big risk. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.